Now the latest with the ITV National Evening News. More NHS Trust declare a critical incident as staff are either off sick or isolating with COVID. But despite mounting pressure on hospitals, the Prime Minister rules out imposing any more restrictions in England. I think the way forward for the country as a whole is to continue with the path that we're on. Uh, we'll keep everything under review. Also tonight, a potentially significant development in Prince Andrew's sexual abuse case in the US. Plus... Hi! <laughs> Hello! Hi, it's so nice to meet you. Are you OK with shaking hands? Yes, I'm very The Canadian hockey fan who delivered a life-saving message mid-match now on her way to medical school. This is ITV News with Lucrezia Millerini. Good evening. ITV News has been told that at least half a dozen NHS trusts in England have declared critical incidents as COVID leaves some hospitals dangerously short-staffed. Thousands of doctors and nurses are being forced to stay home after either testing positive or being told to isolate. But despite uh, warning the considerable pressure on hospitals may get worse, the Prime Minister appeared to rule out the need for further restrictions in England. As our deputy political editor Anush Kristana reports. It may be a new year, but for Boris Johnson, it's the same setting Happy new year. Happy new year. Happy new year. and the same message. I've had mine. I had a Pfizer. I think you're getting Moderna. Oh, I am getting Moderna, yes. A very good drug, I'm told. Very... Arguing that this heavy focus on vaccines still means no need for new restrictions. I, I think the way forward for the country as a whole is to continue with the path that we're on. Uh, we'll keep everything under review. Of course, we keep all measures under review. But he admitted Omicron is taking its toll on our healthcare system. I think we've got to, to recognise that the, uh, the pressure on our NHS, on our hospitals, is going to be uh, considerable in the course of the next couple of weeks and, and maybe more. The most important data is hospital admissions, which are much lower than the peak last January, but are rising. There are now 14,210 COVID patients in English hospitals, up 68% in seven days. The pressure is already being felt at an NHS trust in Lincolnshire. It declared a critical incident because Omicron is driving staff absences that are now compromising care. Is that a one-off or is that something we're seeing across the country? So we've got a number of trusts, around half a dozen at least, who've had to declare critical incidents because they're trying to juggle rising number of COVID cases, rising number of staff absences, on top of the fact that we've got a very, very busy health and social care system for non-COVID care. It's not just hospitals. Schools are also having to cope with the onslaught of Omicron. In New Malden, this head teacher is preparing for students to be tested before they return, for new rules on masks and for those absences, with seven staff already out happens. and more likely yeah, to follow. So li literally, um, one has just popped into my inbox now on our COVID illness report. Um, uh, someone else has tested positive. I imagine that's how it's going to be for most of this term, if I'm honest with you. So what are you doing to prepare for that? There is no extra money for su supply, so we couldn't afford many supply teachers anyway. Um, I think what we'll end up doing is what we call super covers and having 80, 90 students in halls at exam tables uh, getting on with their work quietly. But that is much more desirable than having students at home. And so in schools and in hospitals, the pressure is on. But for now at least, restrictions are not. Anoush Gurustana, ITV News. Our reporter Yasmin Bolabai is outside Lincoln County Hospital, one of those where a critical incident has been declared. And Yasmin, the Prime Minister, not the only one warning about pressures. No, absolutely. There are warning signs from within the NHS as well about just how much pressure it could come under over the next few weeks. As you say, the trust that runs these hospitals here in Lincolnshire has declared a critical incident. There were some really strong words in a leaked email that was first seen by the Sunday Times where the trust said that the rising number of COVID cases has put extreme and unprecedented staff shortages which could lead 
to compromise care. Now, they're having to take additional steps to keep services going. That includes asking staff who are not sick and who are not isolating to work extra hours and also asking staff here to consider limiting social contact when they're outside of work. Uh, the doors here are still very much open for essential services. We've been here for most of the day and we've seen people coming in and out. But uh, as we've been hearing, health leaders are saying that uh, this isn't the only trust that is struggling. And of course, this is a stark warning that if you get a rising number of patients coming in and falling numbers of people who can look after them, it's just not sustainable. Oh, Yasmin, in Lincoln, thank you. Now to a potentially significant development in the sexual assault case against Prince Andrew in the United States. Now legal papers have been published detailing an agreement his accuser, Virginia Jeffrey, struck with convicted paedophile Jeffrey Epstein in 2009. Prince Andrew's lawyers claim the deal prevents her taking legal action against him. The Duke has always denied her allegations. Well, Dan Rivers is in Windsor, where the Duke is currently staying. Dan, what what do these documents say? Well, these documents will clearly be seized on by Prince Andrew's uh, lawyers as a reason that this civil case should be dismissed, a case that's being brought by Virginia Giuffre uh, in New York. Uh, she is, of course, suing uh, Prince Andrew for alleged uh, sexual uh, assault uh, uh, allegations that the uh, prince obviously uh, denies. These documents specifically show that she settled a similar civil case with Jeffrey Epstein, the disgraced billionaire, back in 2009 for half a million dollars, about £371,000. But it also spelt out that she would agree not to bring any uh, similar claims against any of his associates. And the wording uh, of the uh, agreement, the settlement, is interesting and, and, and pretty clear. It says uh, she would hereby remise, release, acquit, satisfy and forever discharge the said second parties and any other person or entity who could have been included as a potential defendant from all and all manner of action and actions of Virginia Roberts. And it also goes on to say that that would apply from the beginning of the world. So her, uh, so Prince Andrew's lawyers will clearly say that that's pretty unequivocal. The, the key question in all this is, does that agreement, that settlement uh, that she reached in that case in Florida apply to the case that is being brought against Prince Andrew in New York, especially as the alleged abuse happened uh, in London and the US uh, Virgin uh, Islands? Uh, of course, this all will be decided before a judge uh, tomorrow in a virtual hearing, but potentially more uh, damaging uh, allegations if that case goes ahead. But Prince Andrew's lawyers will be hoping that this settlement will mean that it won't. All right, Dan and Windsor, thank you. A teenage boy will appear in court tomorrow charged with the murder of a 15-year-old in South London. Dane Amable Lena died after being stabbed in the heart in a park in Croydon on Thursday evening. The 15-year-old suspect has not been named because of his age. Another 15-year-old boy has been released under investigation. The fire which devastated South Africa's parliament is burning again this evening. Flames and smoke could be seen coming from the building in Cape Town as firefighters try to put it out. The fire, which first started on Sunday, gutted offices and caused ceilings to collapse. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro has said he may need surgery after being taken to hospital with abdominal pain. The 66-year-old has been operated on several times since being stabbed during the 2018 presidential election. Family, friends and fans bid a final farewell to the comedian Jethro at his funeral in Cornwall today. Mourners lined the streets of Truro to pay their respects as his wicker coffin was driven through the city. People packed Truro Cathedral for the service with more than 5,000 also watching online. It was followed by a private family burial. Jethro, who died last month, aged 73, after contracting Covid, rose to fame in the 1980s and 90s. In Canada, a spectator at a hockey match who alerted a member of the team staff to a cancerous mole has been awarded a $10,000 scholarship as a thank you for saving his life. Nadia Popovici was watching a Vancouver Canucks game when she spotted the mole on the neck of Brian Hamilton. Ellie Pitt has the details. Are you okay with shaking hands? Yes, okay. uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much thank for you. reaching out. Well, oh thank my gosh. You. I was so they were complete shocked. strangers oh, until one life-changing moment yeah, back in like October. 
During an ice hockey match in Seattle, fan Nadia Popovici, an eagle-eyed aspiring doctor, spotted something that didn't seem right. Just seeing him walk by the plexiglass multiple times, my eyes were immediately drawn to the back of his neck. Unbeknown to him, equipment manager Brian Hamilton had a concerning looking mole. It immediately caught my eye and it just met all the hallmarks for what I thought skin cancer may look like. She held up her phone telling him to see a doctor, advice he took and will never regret. The mole was cancerous but caught early and treated. She extended my life. She, she saved my life and it's not the, you know, she didn't she didn't take me out of a burning car like the, the big stories, but she took me out of, a, out of a slow fire. And the words out of the doctor's mouth were, if I ignored that for four to five years, I wouldn't be here. She's already saved a life. At a match on New Year's Day, Brian and Nadia's respective hockey teams thanked her by revealing a $10,000 donation towards her medical school fees. Nadia's medical career is off to a good start as this story just keeps getting better. John. This student has started her life-saving career as she means to go on. Ellie Pitt, ITV News. Finally, a toddler who dressed up as the Queen has caught Her Majesty's attention. Jelaine Sutherland was pictured with her family's corgis at their home in Ohio. Well, after sending the photograph to Buckingham Palace, she got a letter back saying that the Queen was pleased to see her splendid outfit. And that's it. I'm back at ten past ten. Until then, bye-bye.